Uh, hi there, everybody. Welcome to Trans in the Am Friendly Fridays. Uh, this week I have with me the glorious Nat Puff. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of really cool things. How are you doing today, Nat? I'm doing good. I'm just turning on my lights with my phone so I have slightly better lighting. There you go. Uh, but that really didn't do at all, anything at all, so... Oh, I think it Oops. looks good. You're fine. Thank you're you. Fine. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. yes. How you been? How have I been? Yeah. Well, the past couple of days have been an improvement. I'm still not satisfied with life, but who is? That's true. Yeah. But I'm getting there. I'm closer than I was the day before. That's good. Baby steps, yeah. right? Baby steps. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Well, thank Yo, you for... Right, go ahead. I just realized. I just realized. So, so your podcast name is Trans in the AM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that like a the logo makes me think that the Trans Am thing was uh, yeah. intentional. Yeah, absolutely okay. intentional. Yeah, I actually right. stylize it like Trans in the AM, so it kind of like rolls off the tongue a little bit better. But um, no, I, I workshopped that with some friends, and they were like, "Oh, you should do Trans something." And so I was like, okay, well, trans what? And like some, one of the car guys in one of our group chats was like, oh, you should do a trans am joke. And I was like, okay, sure. Why not? So that's what we're doing. Oh yeah. God, there is no angle of this camera that it doesn't look completely messy. Oh, hold okay. on, hold on, hold on. No, that's not that. You can see the Pringles can that I've left <laughs> on my computer. All right. This nice. is as good as we're going to get. That's perfect. So let's... Great. That's perfect. <laughs> so um, uh, let's dive into it a little bit. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with um, coming out as trans and, and how that process has gone for you? Honestly, it's really like, like, I am like, oh, God, like, maybe five years into this shit, mm -hmm. around the 30s. I started forgetting that like I've like I I like I know I'm trans but I've forgotten about the whole transition process. Um <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know I don't know if that's common but um either way like around the 30 year I just started forgetting like the years. I remember being like it's day 162 <laughs> on HRT and like now yeah. I'm like it might be the 5th year. Who yeah. knows. Uh I do know that like I started HRT like a couple days before my sister gave birth to her first kid and um like a week or so before um the 2016 election uh and i, I i'm gonna tell you this and you don't have to cut it out i don't think <laughs> sure um but um the reason that I remember all this is because that around the time I made an HRT timeline transition sort of video mm -hmm. and uh, basically I would film myself once a day, just giving the thumbs up to the camera and I haven't edited it. I haven't finished it, but uh, I do know that if I do release the song, this particular song, then it's going to be the music video for this song. But oh, nice. It's a couple albums out. I I did the math earlier today and currently like I'm currently working on eight different albums. Mm -hmm. Uh and the people who follow me and are, keep up with me are probably like, "Whoa, hold on there. Eight albums? You said 3 last time." Well, <laughs> I didn't include uh, the albums that have been shelved indefinitely. Yeah. Um, and I didn't include the collaboration albums that I'm working on. So there we go. I'm working on eight albums. Wow. That's... Uh, but I'm getting really off topic. My point being, I, I started transitioning in like... 2015 2016 because the election for 2016 was in 2015 right yeah okay <clears throat> okay okay um yeah so i started transitioning like 2015 2016 and um i knew i was trans like a couple years before that 
uh, some private circumstances led me to not getting hormones as quickly as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I do remember like, um, do I remember? Hold on. <laughs> um, I do remember like, I was talking with my sister about this actually on her podcast, mm -hmm. um, about how like I, I, I stole her like snow white dress. Um, she had this snow white dress that she wore for Halloween one year. And like two years later, I, I dug it out of her closet and I wore it. And it was like one of my favorite things at the time. Mm -hmm. and it's really funny. Cause I haven't worn a dress in like maybe a year. Mm -hmm. I am, I am not the femme. I am not the femme that I once was. And, uh, I think it's really interesting to just like, like be kind of butch. Mm -hmm. as a trans lesbian because like i feel like like i feel like if there's anybody who can disprove that gender is about presentation it's like butch trans lesbians oh yeah and the fact that i'm even adjacent to that group of people <laughs> Like, like, even though I'm, I know I'm not like butch enough or whatever, mm -hmm. like to like consider myself to be like 100% butch, I respect and love all the trans butches in my life because, oh my God, they're wonderful. But I'm, I'm, I keep on going off topic. I, I, no, you're fine. okay, great. I, I, <laughs> I only point it out. Because that I'm like, you asked a question, and I don't think I've really answered it yet. Uh, to the point where it's, uh, I kind of forgot the question. That's okay. Uh, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. No. Um, no, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience with like, um, so how did you realize that you were trans? When, when did that realization come to you? And was there any like... I know a lot of people have like specific events that they can point to that crack their egg or whatnot. Um, do you have something like that? I do. And I tweeted about it a, like a week or so ago. Um, but essentially I did this, um, I did this audition. I was a child actor at a point mm -hmm. and um, I did this audition for the TV show leverage. Oh, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was like, I must have been like 13, 14 at the time. Wow. Uh, and I was trying to audition for the role of a young Elliot. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a flashback scene. Mm -hmm. And in the original script, they had Elliot, like they had Elliot's origin story essentially be that he was this like goth teen. And, you know, he would like, read his angsty poetry to the cheerleaders and they would be all a bonds. Um, and that was me. I was auditioning to be like, well, I was way too young for, I was, I was way too young for the role, but I still <laughs> auditioned for it because that I didn't really understand what was going on. But I drove to Portland and I wore like this, like my, my mom made me a shirt that had the cure on like the cure, like, album cover on it oh yeah okay and um and then like i did like eyeliner and a ponytail is the first time my hair was in a ponytail <laughs> and um like i i did the audition it was whatever mm -hmm. i left the audition and uh you know we went out for pizza. For some reason, I can vividly remember the pizza place. I can vividly remember the pizza place that we went what? to afterwards. It was right across the street from like, no, it wasn't across the street. It was like a couple blocks away from, but the place was still visible. It was like a science museum. Mm -hmm. These are very important details that I have to say. <laughs> um, but <laughs> essentially, um, that night, I had a dream that I like saw me as as like like dressed as the young Elliot but like with a feminine figure and Ooh. like 
like a couple years older than me and her name was Jessica and uh which is not my fucking name uh but like that's not the name that I ended up going for I I considered it to be a middle name but I'll get to that story in a second what I had ended up choosing my middle name um to be but I had that dream oh an important part of the dream Mm -hmm. is uh we were on a beach and we started walking in circles Mm -hmm. she just kept on going like follow me and we just kept on walking in circles and i was like where are we going she was just like follow me and we kept on walking in circles but i was behind her and i was following her that whole time Mm -hmm. and um side note the phrase uh uh, if I could go outside again and I could be like any other girl, um, I'd dress in a face mask and walk on the beach till my feet hurt. The walk on the beach till my feet hurt was a direct reference to that dream. Oh. Uh, like the, the song T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so genius annotators get on that. Uh, but <laughs> uh, pretty much like I had that dream and then I woke up and I was like, that was weird. Time to live a couple more years uh, fully not acknowledging what had just happened. <laughs> that was weird. And then, anyway. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, anyways. <laughs> and then, like, um, I remember uh, this is also, I feel like, if there's anything that can, like, <laughs> if there's anything that I can be like, yeah, I'm mentally ill and trans and I wasn't out at this point and i didn't realize it myself if there's any way that i can like illustrate that i know the perfect fucking thing because there was a point where i was into self-hypnosis uh for the sake of like teaching myself to like visualize me shape-shifting oh okay i i get that i get that yeah yeah and like like i was like like I like I found out that like there's a lot of like horny fucking hypnosis out there that's like very similar but I swear yeah. to god I wasn't doing it for horny reasons <laughs> but it definitely did mess me up a little bit mm-hmm. but anyways uh <laughs> so I like was like you know I I never was able to do it but I like bought a self hypnosis book from mm-hmm. like the local bookstore and like I like read it over and over and over and tried to do it. But like, literally my mind was too young to like take. And I just never was able to do it. But I do remember like actively like one night being like, all right, I'm going to try to shape shift into a girl. And then like, (laughs) you know, like then I never did it again because I was so ashamed. And, um, Meanwhile, I could be like, yeah, I'm going to be a Pikachu tonight, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> you know, just like, like right. that was totally fair game for me. Yeah. But like, like there was like some self internal shame uh, about, you know, uh, right. trying to explore uh, with gender specifically. Um, don't know where that came from, but <laughs> it definitely paid off in the long run. Uh, but pretty much. Like, yeah, so that that happens. Um, what else? What what were other egg things? I You know, I have a whole ass list. I have a whole ass list, I think. Oh, shit. I'm let's in my it. notes app. Yeah, let's... Uh, let's crack it open. Let's crack this egg open. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Hold on. It's like... Okay. Okay. Wow, this is, oh my. Is it a full list? Oh my, it's, it's more than that. It is, uh, it is a lot of fucking things that I forgot about my past. Uh. (laughs) Flashback time. Flashback time. I'm getting major, uh, fucking. Oh, I was having realizations in like 2013, I guess. 2012, 2013, yeah. Damn. Damn. But I can't find the... I can't find the... um, thing. But either way... 
I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna pocket that for a little bit. Okay. Read, right. it, read it at a different date because yeah. there are some things in there that are really intense. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, pretty much. Um, pretty much, I've like written like a whole like what I was mm -hmm. trying to find. I was I like wrote this whole like reasons that I'm trans and reasons that I'm not trans list. And I remember there were only like two things in the reasons that I'm not trans, and it's like. I like wearing shirts. Like, <laughs> yeah. come on, come on. It's 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 literally hilarious. Just like looking back on it, but that's cute. That's funny. I will say I completely forgot to mention this earlier, but mm -hmm. um, the Jessica thing, the dream, mm -hmm. I have a tattoo commemorating that dream. Oh, it's on a back shoulder. I can't show it because my shirt doesn't go all the way down. Sure. Uh. Like I can't like right. do that, but um, but it's on the back of my shoulder here, and it's uh this picture that I took. Um, it's a selfie that I took. I literally got an outline of a selfie that I took where I just like I my back was facing the mirror, and my selfie camera was pointed at the mirror, so you can only see the back of my head in a ponytail. And I was like, wow, in this picture, I literally look like jessica and so i just got a tattoo of that picture to commemorate the dream and now jessica's the one following me ah yeah, so it's, that, it's like a little metaphor thing so cute, it's cute. so cute. It's cute i love it yeah. I, w I was very happy to get that tattoo i got it um I got that and this tattoo either for free or at a discount because the um one of my friends uh is uh, what or was at the time she's gone on to do many many tattoos at this point but mm -hmm. uh she was a tattoo apprentice and so oh. i was able to i literally just got it for a discount and like i think i tipped her in merch um and like she was chill with it she like literally <laughs> asked for it yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. like great great cool oh, yeah. um but yeah i'm pretty sure that there's a live somewhere floating out there like a like a like a like a periscope live or something like that where i literally was getting the tattoo and just like filming myself get it um and i remember this because that like this tattoo i got to commemorate the um the h bomber guy stream that oh he yeah did to like yeah um where he like uh raised like a shit ton of money for mm -hmm mermaids i think it was um wasn't um was that the one that aoc jumped on at the end yes okay. yes yeah uh, um and like like i said if i reached a certain amount of twitter followers by the end of the stream then i would get a tattoo commemorating the stream and i did and um so like like in a second in a fucking second uh, and so I was like, all right, cool. Uh, and then I got the tattoo and as I was getting the tattoo, as I was live streaming it, uh, H bomber guy was also live streaming and he literally got a comment on his live stream saying like, Nat's getting the tattoo and live streaming it. And he literally just quits the game <laughs> and just starts like watching my live on his live. That's awesome. And it was, it was, it was really nice. It was really, it was really adorable, honestly. That's really sweet. Yeah. I like yeah. that. That was the, a, was that the Donkey Kong one? The Donkey Kong one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and like every time that he brushed his teeth, they said Teeth Gang. So that's why I got this. <laughs> teeth Gang. Um, that's right. That's right. I remember that now. Yeah. I, he, he's such a fucking nice guy. I got, mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of meeting him like at XOXO Fest in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he shouted me out uh, in his presentation he was like, I actually know that there's somebody in this audience who had a tattoo. And I wasn't in the audience. I slept through it. Oh. He didn't know, though. Oh, Mom. <laughs> he didn't know okay. at the time. But that that's uh, that's commemorated forever on the internet. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Um, other trans things that cracked my egg. I can't think of anything. I, I, it was pretty cut and dry, or at least... Uh, that's all, the cut and dry stuff was all that I remembered. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God. Uh, but, you know, I. 
it's complex, you know, because it's like, like I don't remember too much of that era. I just remember that it sucked. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm kind of glad that I don't remember too much of it because I can just kind of move on with my life. Sure. But at the same time, it's like, damn, that's like a whole segment of my life that I just, yeah. Um. So it's you know, take the good with the bad, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, I I find that that's pretty common. And um, to touch a little bit on you know something that you you mentioned a little bit, I find that there's a lot of um, trans people I talk to that have a similar experience. They felt like some level of shame for wanting to be um, the person that they are now. You know, and yeah. um, I find that's really really common, and that's really unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that so many of you know, my brothers and sisters are going through something like that um, where they yeah, feel this I mean, and don't like really know where it's coming from necessarily, you know? I remember that when I realized that I was trans, it was like in the sweet spot right after Laura Jane Grace that came out and right before Caitlyn Jenner came out. Yeah. So it was like people kind of knew and were starting to kind of get it, but like I, as much as I hate the bitch, Caitlyn Jenner kind of did a lot. Like... <laughs> like for like yeah. you know like cis people to understand shit yeah uh but like she hasn't done anything since that <laughs> her, her her biggest accomplishment was being trans <laughs> and that that is just like kind of sad considering that like you know like i can be referred to as a trans artist here and there but like people yeah. know that like the thing that i've the things that i've done that like are more impactful to others don't solely revolve around my transness you know like i do music i've made the comedies i've i don't know i've hugged a lot of people really well uh yeah but, yeah but i don't know that, that that's that's a tangent for another day um sure but... well i mean it does bring us a that's a good transition to the next um topic i wanted to talk about was do you have any uh, any hobbies or interests that you're working on right now? I know that you mentioned that you're kind of working on eight albums at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've just been like, literally all I do is cook and make music and watch community and Based. eat the food that I've just cooked. Yeah. That's all I do. I'm very consistent uh, to a fault. Mm -hmm. um notice how in that list i didn't say cleaning uh <laughs> we it happens yeah. here I'm, I'm really happy that you have a green screen because if you because if you're if your house is messy then like you know the green screen can just cover that all up that's 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 the reason for the green screen yeah i fucking knew it <laughs> Hold on. i i know that there's like some sort of like there's like hold up here there we go. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> By the way, what what flavor Pringles are your favorite? What flavor Pringles are my favorite? Yeah. It's uh, still pickle, shit. right? It's pickle Rick I've, flavor. I've never had the pickle Rick flavor, no. Uh, but I, I've had dill pickle chips, like the kettle chips. Mm -hmm. I personally think if I'm going to go for a salty like tart like a salty and tart sort of taste in a chip i'm not gonna go for dill pickle i'm gonna go for pepperoncini okay sure yeah like i th i think that like pepperoncini as a chip is really underutilized and underrated mm -hmm. i feel like it's got the salt and vinegar sort of taste but with like like sort of the spiciness to it, mm -hmm. like a really subtle spiciness. I don't like regular pepperoncinis, mind you, but I do love the chips. And I I think it's just a texture thing because like, you know, pepperoncini squeaks in your mouth. Yeah, it's weird. it does. Where do you find like, pepperoncini chips? Like, is there a brand? So, well, yeah, kettle. Um, okay. Like, have, have you had kettle chips? Like, I have, like not like but... chips that are kettle chips, but like the brand kettle yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah. They come in like, I think okay. it's like a, mostly a brown if i'm not mistaken i don't know i'll look it up but so, so the brown they're all different colors based on what flavor it is mm -hmm. um the brown ones are the sea salt ones the blue ones are the salt and pepper ones sometimes they're in the brown 
Um, this is really this is really important information for you to know. Honey yeah. Dijon is in yellow. Okay. Uh, Korean barbecue is in purple. That's one of my favorites. I like that one. Um, I've had that one. Yeah. You've had Korean barbecue? Mm -hmm. So fucking good. It is. Whoever really came good. up with that was a genius because like <laughs> Korean barbecue is so much different than American barbecue. Yeah. They've got similarities and like you can taste them if you taste one chip back to back. Right. But at the same time. You got to go for those subtle the, nuances. Yeah. You really got to go for the subtle nuances. Yeah. It's it's about the it's about like, you know, finding and appreciating the differences between one thing and another that makes life worth worth living. That's right. And in that same way, we can find somebody who compliments us and like compliments our personality and um you know has a similar personality that's not the same and we can appreciate the differences right that's that's what makes life worth living exactly uh imagine that i slammed the desk way harder than i did because you know i didn't i didn't want to like break the desk uh, you know due to my superhuman strength oh my god um, yeah that's right estrogen but, gives you tons of strength right yeah um yeah. it's the reason that we're so good at sports yeah uh but um to answer the original question about pringles specifically i haven't had so so the funny thing about pringles is that like as far as basic chip flavors go salt and vinegar pretty much hits the spot like every single time yeah except for pringles yeah their salt and vinegar is mid yeah that being said the top two, in no particular order. Actually, no, top three. In no particular order. These are all sort of like an amalgamation. Original, sour cream and onion, and pizza. With sour cream and onion maybe being the top yeah. out of all three of those. Yeah. The pizza one I haven't had in a minute, but I remember it being very good. Yeah. And I would honestly have it, like, in a heartbeat if I, like, knew where to get them. Oh, yeah. I just, like, I, I live next to a store that, like how do i put it would rather sell kettle chips than pringles mm -hmm. it's like a it's like kind of like a it's kind of like a like a like a it's kind of like a bougetarian place okay. yeah. um but like i live right next to it so i just walk there and i <laughs> i get what i want and then i leave nice but they don't have what oh god they don't have taquitos they don't have any frozen taquitos that bamboozled me. That's like the most common thing, right? They like, also they also have vegan corn dogs, but they don't have regular corn dogs. That shocked me. What's a vegan corn dog? Is it like plant meat or something? I guess. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. I mean, like the like the the brand that they sell. They they sell two types, I think. Yeah. They sell the Morning Star, which we don't fuck with Morning Star because it's Kellogg's, and number two is field roast and the field roast ones they have like a pack of like 10 mini corn dogs in like one little bag mm -hmm. they're so expensive but they're so fucking good they are literally one of the best like like i don't know what it is about vegan corn dogs specifically mm -hmm. but every time i have a vegan corn dog i low-key enjoy it more than like a regular corn dog and i think it's because that they really like pay attention to the batter yeah i I think that's like a thing because that like like there's a bar in Portland called the Hungry Tiger. They have corn dogs. They have vegan corn dogs specifically that literally every time that I've had them, I'm like, why am I even eating regular corn dogs to the point where I was vegetarian mm -hmm. for like three years? Yeah, um, that's how convincing they were. <laughs> but um, then the field roast ones are really fucking good because the batter like just it's like mini corn dogs, so they don't have the stick, so it's like all encompassing, and they're just like the perfect amount of crisp. Especially if you put them in the air fryer. Oh God, I love that. Yeah. Do you do you fuck with the air fryer? Yeah, I fuck with the air fryer. Um, yeah, we got one last Christmas or something, and this changed the way I cook. I mean, it just makes things so oh, yeah. easy. Like it, it cooks fries better than the oven can. I don't have a deep fryer. I'm not gonna deep fry fries every time I want fries. But yeah, that's just like too much oil to dispose yeah, of. Yeah, you know? right. Like. I, I've used my deep fryer once. Yeah. I have a deep fryer that I won at a carnival. Um, <laughs> I that is, that is a very important that is a very important detail. I, I want to go over carnival. that story. I want to know how you won a deep fryer at a carnival. 
Oh, I literally, uh, like, it was literally me and uh, my ex-partner, and we went to, well, not a carnival, it was more like an arcade. Uh, we went to an arcade, and we, um, we just kept on playing the games that we were the best at, and occasionally we'd be like, I'm kind of bored of this game, let's try one other one, and at one point I got the mega jackpot at, like, the, like, the ball drops from the center and like mm -hmm. bounces on like the spinning wheel and the thing is there's like the like on the outer edge there's like 15 tickets 30 tickets zero tickets on the middle one there's like like 50 100 mm -hmm. and then they have two in the center one is jackpot and one is mega jackpot i got the direct center mega jackpot and literally got like they literally had to refill the machine twice <laughs> to give me the amount of tickets that I was owed. Jeez. It was incredible. I, wow. I, I, I've spent the rest of my life chasing that high. And I had enough. Uh, I, I'd spent $80 for tokens. I, I spent $80 in tokens to get like enough tickets to win a kitchen appliance that is retail $20. Nice. But you know what? <laughs> we ball. <laughs> like what like <laughs> it's a scam but i don't mind it because i got a great story out of it right but um yeah. are you um are you familiar at all with brutal moose brutal moose yeah i used to watch a lot <laughs> is this nardwar are you nardwar <laughs> are you nardwarring me right now <laughs> Maybe. I haven't seen I haven't seen his fucking videos in a minute. I I like used to be really into like, um, um. I used to be really into, uh, like video game YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, all that shit, um, and just the. Oh my god! This is just bringing me back. Oh shit! I'm I'm like I, like I have the tab open and the other one. What what was the reason that you brought up brutal news? Oh well, I just uh, I think he put out a video recently that my partner and I watched where he went back to one of those um, arcades or I think he went to round one or something like that and played a whole bunch of games at round one and <laughs> there's one machine that he kept coming back to and I guess he was doing like live commentary as he was watching it not remembering what he recorded in what order or whatever and so he ends up going back to the there's a <laughs> there's a machine where you have to like you have to take this stick and break a q-tip and the prize drops down and it's a sailor moon doll and so he comes back to the sailor moon game like four or five times and at the end of it he's like oh well I guess you know maybe I went to play the plinko game again or something and he's like oh no never mind I guess I'm back at the sailor moon game so here we go <laughs> no that was literally us that day yeah do you does that tattoo say the end um no it says this is not the end <gasps> yo I've been bamboozled what what's the origin um, so I got this, um, as partially, um, like a way to deal with my own body dysphoria and mm -hmm. then also partially to, uh, remember an artist that had passed away, uh, Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park. Yes. Um, a lot of his stuff was like really formative for me and when he passed, it hurt me really like I had no reason to be hurt that much by somebody famous passing away, but um, no, it it really no, made think, me sad. I think that, like I think that like you know, parasocial relationships. Like we can discuss like the unhealthiness of having them while somebody is alive, but like if you admire somebody that does not know you and they die. Like there's like this like weird like sudden finality that just hits your chest yeah. and like I felt that exact same thing with Robin Williams passed. Yeah. Like Robin Williams was a huge one for me to the point where like years later I go to the Mopop uh, down in downtown Seattle mm -hmm. and they have a sci-fi section of the museum where they had like his jumpsuit from Mork and Mindy, mm -hmm. like the one that he wore on set. And I just, like, literally had to take a minute. I had to take a minute in order to, like, take that in. I think that, like, 
the way that media like fictional media or like um storytelling media any form of being able to convey emotion any art um really can affect us in a way that like i think is perfectly like i i think that like you know the idea of like mourning somebody that like to mourn somebody that did not know you after they've passed is a very unique and gut-wrenching feeling that i feel like you know like i i have a complex relationship with um like just like discussions on parasociality because like you know being a person in the spotlight i can be like you know what like like sometimes fans can really like ignore my boundaries and shit like that and like you know really make me feel uncomfortable and mm -hmm. i kind of have to just take it because that's like you know part of the role that i play but like at the same time like like for for every one person that like for every one fan of mine that completely ignores my boundaries and completely like makes me feel insane uh like there are like 10 20 people out there that like are fans of mine and just appreciate my work and like do it respectfully and not like quietly but like they do it respectfully to a point where it's like I feel admiration from you. I feel respect from you. I feel like, um, like, cause it's a very unique feeling that I like feel like it's hard to talk about having fans without feeling like I'm coming across as a pompous ass, but I feel like it's like, you know, something that, um, that really has like affected my life mm -hmm. in this way that like, I looking back, when when Robin Williams died, I didn't have an audience. And now looking back on Robin Williams having an audience and like the like looking back to the way his suicide was talked about, um like like we we've already discussed as a society, like the sort of like danger of being like uh, of like talking about like, you know, like equating him dying to like the like genie i wish for your freedom scene like we've already talked about that being inappropriate but i think that a, a different thing that sort of like um wasn't talked about that much was like you know to be in a position like that I can imagine, and this is just something that, like, you know, I can imagine. I don't know if this is the truth in the slightest, but I can imagine that, like, you know, when you've built up an audience for yourself and you are at the same time suicidal, completely unrelated things, and you see that you are giving joy and the ability to process certain things and, um, and to some extent, like, healing for certain people. And you kind of, like, look in the mirror after reminiscing on that and being like, but I still, like, like, I, 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 created these things because that was my healing process mm -hmm. and as much as i want there to be an equivalent like like there's this this is gonna sound so weird uh but like there's like a kanye west quote where he says that one of his biggest regrets in his life is the fact that he will never get to see himself perform live and like i think at the time we rightly took that as like a very funny way to be self for the release of that because i didn't want people to be like oh she thinks about murder sometimes yeah Hang i on. fucking do sorry could i interrupt you for just one second go ahead 
Um, is your uh, is it my internet or yours? No, it's um. Sorry, that's my uh, that's my computer. Um, oh. it had stopped recording there for a second, and I I don't know why I didn't click any buttons or anything. But um, no, most right, of it's back? yeah, most of it's recorded. I'll just stitch this together. <laughs> That'll cool. be fun. That sounds good. But yeah, my point being, like, anger is a very important emotion, and there's literally, like, you know, there's like, um. I posted a snippet of this and I posted it on my Patreon. So I feel like, okay with sharing it, but there's a lyric that I made that was, that literally the, starts the whole song. Uh, that's just like, I started getting angry. It only, it's only happened lately. Um, somebody told me I was getting tiring to save, but I don't know what's wrong. And I think that out of all of like the opening for my openings for my songs, like that song, which is called good intent. And it's available on my Patreon. Um, is um, one of my most honest songs where I wasn't intending to be honest. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to write, and then I related to it afterwards. And that is a different cathartic feeling to like be able to be like, um, like writing, 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 writing. Wait, I relate to that. I was just saying nonsense, but all of a sudden I relate to that. That is the closest that I feel like I get usually to yeah. like feeling like I can relate to somebody else's art and because like you know stream of consciousness comes from a different place than intended intended thoughts and right. intended expression and like you know I try to experiment with writing in other people's perspectives um you know other than my own and that also helps me. It's just a really interesting phenomenon to be like writing about things that you haven't experienced and then to feel like you have experienced them and then realizing that you have experienced them. Mm -hmm. And I think in that way, like I go back to relating to the music and then it, like you know like i have like it's not like i haven't related to music that wasn't mine ever in the past it's mm -hmm. like i feel like the way that i relate to music like lyrically is very much different than the way that i present my lyrics i feel like i'm very blunt i feel like i'm very upfront i feel like i barely say a metaphor and like I just try to find poetic ways to like, you know, talk about the struggle and shit, but like, it's fairly metaphorical. It's usually very just like upfront. Hey, here's how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, uh, the, I think that if you compare that to the music that I was making in high school, um, which is available on Bandcamp, uh, <laughs> like, I think if you compare those two, like you compare like the folky acoustic gnat to, whatever the hell I'm doing right now, <laughs> like the lyrics are written like they're like, like it's not the same person. Mm -hmm. Like I, like my lyrical um, influences back in high school were like, you know, very esoteric. Yeah. And nowadays I feel like I'm mostly lyrically inspired by pop that tries to take it in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I try to approach everything that I do uh, with a pop sensibility, including back when I was doing it in high school. And it's gotten me places where, you know, I, w I will get like, actively excited to like write certain lyrics i remember i remember i i tried for one song to just be like super fucking braggadocious just to be like 
just for fun, you know? Cause yeah. like the thing is that I listen, the genre that I listen to the most is hip hop. And one of the tropes of that genre is, you know, to like talk a lot of game about yourself. Yeah. Cause if you, if you, if you got, if you got, if you got it, why not flaunt it? And I'm like, okay, I'm writing shit about like how I like am mentally ill. How do I, how do I do that? And so I just did it for one song and it was yeah. really fun. Uh, and like, um, and cause like, I was trying to do that thing where it's like, you know, like combination, like talking about mundane things of it as if they're bra- like things to brag about, like, um, like the lyric in question, um, was, um, um, I'm such a poser. I smoke joints like cigarettes. I hate tapes, but you can still buy my new album on cassette. Um, I knew I made it once I started getting threats. Like, like that, those three lines back to back. I love those lines. That's good. I like that. Thank you. Uh, but, (laughs) um, yeah, like, like just like experimenting with the way that I like try to convey information and what information that I am conveying is very important, but like, you know, occasionally I'll get stuck in a rut, actually not even occasionally, often, uh, where I will be talking about the same things. And, you know, sometimes it leads to really interesting ways to try to subvert that, uh, like trying to make it be spoken by a different character or adding a word that I would never usually use Mm -hmm. or like, you know, just rewriting the whole damn thing. It can be really fun. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think that like the way that I keep myself invested is really just dependent on, um, like acknowledging when I am bored. I feel like that's something that I've been able to do a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what has been like inspiring this third album. Like I, I still have passion for like album two and transgender street legend volume three, but these are things that I made mid 2020 and sometimes a little bit earlier. Yeah. That like, I just need to like finish. And as far as approaching new things goes, I, I'm really excited for this third LP because I actually have a consistent sound in this one. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of critics have either praised or, uh put me down for the idea that like no two songs sound similar and like i still try to implement that like i still try to make like you know i still am not trying to like make the same song over and over right but there's like some unique quality that this album has that i can't put my finger on that kind of ties it all together and i think people are gonna really like i i think people are gonna really like what's in store Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm very hype. I'm very hype about it. Um, I'm excited. I know one of the, and, and not to like, continually bring this up, but one of the things that really drew me to, um, Lincoln Park was the fact that after, after I think it was their second album or their third album, uh, the Meteora one, like they really started to change up their sound, like each following album was a little bit different. I don't know if you ever listened to The Hunting Party, but it was like wildly di- It was like, I guess, the closest you could get to um, hybrid theory that they've ever done. I need to actually listen to more Linkin Park. The closest that I've gotten to li- listening to like Linkin Park intentfully, on purpose, over and over is this one remix that I actually shared with uh, with my- with one of my friends last night. Mm-hmm. That was like, it was like an 80s redoing of Numb. Oh, yeah. I, I love that one. So it's good. Done, it's done with so much respect to both the original song and the genre that it's trying to emulate. Yeah. That, like, that you can tell that it was made in sincerity. Mm-hmm. Like, you can tell that instead of being like, what, wouldn't it be funny? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, like, right. You can tell that the artist that made mm-hmm. that remix was genuinely like, what it is? would sound really cool. It would sound yeah. really cool if I did this. Yeah, like it, it's it's just very it's 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 very refreshing to like see that mm-hmm. being done because I feel like 
you know, like admiration and sincerity are like, if you approach a tribute with that, you can come up with a lot better of a product. The reason that like people liked the Tyler and Frank videos that I made back in whatever year it was, was because that I respected and admired mm -hmm. both of those artists. And I think people could sense that. Or at least I hope people could sense Like overall people could sense that it seemed. Yeah. And so, you know, I always try to like, even in jest, I try to, I, I, I try to emulate like what I want to with my own style, with respect to the original format. I feel like this third album specifically, which I'm only discussing as much as I am because that is what I'm working on the most right now. Mm -hmm. um has a lot of weird inspirations like i'm just gonna list off a couple random ones um pink panthers bare naked ladies erica badu mm -hmm. uh eclectic fucking mix of people yeah. but uh you you'll you'll get the point once the album comes out i think um i think at least i hope um but yeah I'm excited. I always look forward to seeing a lot of your work. Um, I actually have, uh, <laughs> before I came out as trans even, um, one of my closest friends was a big fan of yours. And after I came out um, and, you know, started doing this stuff, he was like, oh, you should try to get her on. You should try to get her on. I was like, eh, we'll see. We'll see. But um, no, I told him that we were talking today and he just, he's, he's lost his, he's so excited. So. I don't think you'll get her on the show, to be honest. She's kind mm -hmm. of a dick. No, I know she's, like, busy. She's working on, like, 12 albums or something right now. Like I'm Crazy like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She never answers when I call. But... <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, I think that, like, I think I can sense more about a person by watching them listen than hearing them speak. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I, I just like it. I, even if they're like not passionate about it, it's, I still like, you know, mm -hmm. like knowing about like their reactions and why they <laughs> react the way that they do. It's just, ah, uh, it's, it's the closest I get to people watching. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, I don't have anything else that i know about uh to say about it sure um all that being said are, do you have any other questions uh that 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 you feel you want to ask i think it'd be a good time to wrap up we're right about an hour and that's about the the time that they usually go for so uh, yeah. if you don't I, have I, anything I, I else then I looked at the time and I was like, it pro probably should wrap this up, but. <laughs> it's okay. No, I'd be happy but... to talk for as long as you wanted. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just talking about the interview specifically. Sure. Uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like you know, I, I, like, uh, I like hitting off the viewers with like an hour or so of conversation. And then like, there have been times where I'll literally just like shoot the shit with the interviewer, like, for like. 30 minutes or so before or after the thing and it's just really fun to do because that like you know the best the best uh interviews that i have are just conversations yeah yeah and it's, exactly it just it, it just feels like <laughs> it's like it's like it got this vibe of like you know like uh like a, like a good first date if that makes sense yeah right yeah yeah like where it. you're like where you're like oh that person was so nice and then you just like you know part ways yeah and no i mean whatever like, happens happens that's how most of them go honestly uh if i'm going to be true yeah. with true with you is that um yeah. I'll, I'll interview somebody we'll talk a little bit about you know their life and stuff we'll close the interview and sometimes i go on for like two three hours just chatting with people that's i love to talk to people so that's awesome oh so like i 
I definitely agree with that sort of sen- sentiment. It's just like, I feel like I'm this, like, I can't tell if I'm an intro- introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert. Right. Uh, but I think uh, the conclusion that I've come to lately is uh, I am an extrovert who just admires the occasional alone time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I, I think that's, uh, I think that's where, where, where I get off lately, but you know. Cool. Well, do you want to shout out your stuff? Yes. Um, shout out to me for making uh, my debut album, uh, T-I-A-P-F-Y-H. Um, you can go to leftatlondon.com slash T-I-A-P-F-Y-H, all lowercase, if you want to check that out. And uh, if you want to check out my stuff with um, Holiday Kiss. Oh, Yeah. Um, um i'm wearing the shirt right now um but then if you want if you want to check that stuff out go go to uh, just look up wow okay on twitter (laughs) that's where we are most active um (laughs) and if you can't find our um if you can't find our twitter at then just uh look in either of our bios because i'm pretty sure it's i know it's in mine i don't know if it's in robin's but if it isn't, then I'm gonna have a have a little talking <laughs> to. Um, but yeah. Uh, anything else that I can think of to promote? Um, you know what? I'm gonna promote. Um, I'm gonna promote something that isn't mine. Go for it. Uh, I will promote the Chuck Sutton single "All or Nothing." Brilliant fucking song uh he is not trans but he's a homie um so you know nobody's perfect (laughs) but uh but yeah if you want if you want a funky good song that was in insecure uh go check him out uh love that guy um and other than that i can't think of a single damn thing to mention all right well probably forgetting something but you know what i'll that that'll be for later Nat. <laughs> yeah sure well yeah, yeah you're always welcome to come back on if you like um i i tell that to all my guests so um yeah i think i might actually try to do something next year where i like revisit with some people and like go through the list and start doing like oh you want to do an update and stuff like that so that'd be cool but yeah, yeah thank you all sorry go ahead a retrospective yeah, exactly, exactly. Just to just to come back and say, hey, so this is where you were last year. What are you doing this year? Stuff like that. So, yeah. And I'm fun. just going to say this now. If you ever see me promoting an album that is not Tiapa, just hit me up. And like, if I see the message, I would be down to do another interview. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's... <laughs> that's 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 the that's the net puff semi guarantee. <laughs> semi guarantee. I like that. I'm going to have to steal that. It's in my guarantee. Well, yeah, of course. Take it. Well, I do appreciate you coming out. Um, thanks for talking with me and, and sharing your experience and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm really glad that we got to talk. I I know that like I'm very much a scatterbrained person, but <laughs> you're very accommodating for that. So thank you for that. Of course. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Well, um, I do want to thank you all for coming out to the Friendly Friday. Uh, if you would, just please leave a like and a comment to help support the channel. And as always, take care and stay unique.